extreme fighting heavyweight. Uh, super fight champion, Stephen. Yeah, super fight okay. champion. Nice belt displayed by our uh, Hooters Ready? ring girl there. Let's Mark Coleman sitting cage side next to the belt. And Torres coming up punching. He took a right hand though. Horn's been in with some great fighters. He's been with, in with Frank Shamrock, Ebenezer Fontes Braga from Brazil. He's fought in rings. He is an extreme challenge champion. I tell you, I do not think this is where Horn wants to be uh, with a grappler of the caliber of uh, Minotaur. But I tell you, Horn is, is an accomplished fighter, and uh, he's, he's shown a great guard in the past. It'll be interesting to see how this ends up. Oh, the up kick. Minotaur will look to pass the guard here. Two very, very crafty fighters. And he does. Only to have himself taken back into the half guard by... Uh, Jeremy Horn. Jeremy Horn doing a nice job playing guard there. There's a little bit of reality and a little bit of a joke with Minotauro. He was evidently hit by a truck when he was a, a young boy, but they say that the truck took the worst of the wear. <laughs> <laughs> We've all heard all, the, all about it, let me tell you. <laughs> He's a shooting star for the Abu Dhabi tournament in the year 2000. He's an excellent grappler. Looks like he's a pretty decent striker when he was on his feet, too. He's aggressive, yet he's patient. I mean, both these men are working. This isn't just a stalemated thing where they're pulling guard and holding it. They're working here. Horn doing very, very good by getting Minotaur back in his guard. And he's keeping him honest with that up kick because that thing he's circling around, keeping it away from Minotaur, can't grab it. It's probably going to be hard for him to land that kick on the chin of the standing Minotaur. He tries a Sakuraba move. A flying flying stomp. Stomp. <laughs> That's a new one for World Extreme. But that is a legal technique here in World Extreme fighting. Mr. Sakuraba and Pride sort of patented, oh, a little ground upon. He sort of patented, patented that flying stomp move. I've seen him implore that on several instances, Stephen. You're, you're right. If that was to be trademarked or patented by any fighter, I think it would be Sakuraba. Yes, Mr. Kazushi Sakuraba, arguably the best middleweight fighter around. Arguably the best fighter in the world, pound for pound, Stephen. The ground and pound action. Jeremy's staying back far. Jeremy's chipping away, but Minotaur is the aggressor here. I tell you, Tim, this is sort of the opposite relationship I thought these two might have in the fight. Most definitely. I know me and you uh, talked, Wade, about what we thought would happen and could happen. And uh, very good display of Brazilian okay. jiu-jitsu skills here. So we have a restart to standing by our referee, Kip Kohler. Nice low kick by Horn. He's got good defense against the punches there. I, I talked to Nagira about this fight at length on several occasions. And uh, Minotaur said he would be happy to strike with Horn or grapple with him. So uh, I think he's coming out here knowing that uh, he'll go one way or another with him no matter what. Jeremy using the cage there to defend the tackle. Somebody's bleeding. Jeremy's I, I, chipping away with those elbows. I cannot see uh, who's bleeding here. It looked as though the uh, it looked as though the mouth of Horn may have been bleeding. But uh, it's hard to tell us. Uh, Looks like there's a little bit of blood up the of uh, Minotaur's forehead area, left of brow. Now, I can't see that from my perspective here, Tim, but you may be right. Now, I noticed that Minotaur has a little bit of a scar under his right shoulder blade. I wonder if that was where the truck hit him. Uh, Minotaur will tell you that uh, that's where 100 men attacked him with uh, machetes, and that's his only scar. <laughs> but uh, as Minotaur passes to the... Uh, side mount here. He's got the side mount, but Jeremy Horn is still aggressive in, from the bottom with elbows. Very calm. Horn, knowing that he's been here many, many times against many great fighters. I tell you, Tim, and taking a look there, I think you're right. I think over the left eyebrow, the left forehead area of Minotaur Nagara, there may be, uh, there may be a cut. 
we'll have to see whether that plays into this fight at all. Most definitely. Toro's getting off real high on that side note. And this has a wearing effect. He's cooking Horn to a certain degree right now. Nice reversal by Horn. That was beautiful. beautiful. Reversal by Horn. Horn's got to capitalize. Oh, Minotaur turned it right back around again. That was very technical. Looks like Jeremy went to his back there instead of take, having Minotaur take his back. Uh, good call by Jeremy. All those punches were blocked. Jeremy's got outstanding defense to the strike. some booze from the crowd but people that follow the Brazilian jiu-jitsu sport and this sport uh, you know this is a very exciting matchup here a lot of technique a lot of tactic here and strategy I agree with you Tim some of the more technical matches may not be the most crowd thrilling for the general masses but uh, those who know no hold barred no holds barred fighting in jiu-jitsu uh, especially will know that this is a technical matchup that uh, that's just beyond parallel. One of the things that I've noticed over the cards so far is that most of the fighters are grappling oriented because with the exception of Hanato Babalu, there, there, there hasn't been a lot of effective striking. There have been busy striking, but they haven't hurt anyone with a strike. They're just I tell you, Stephen, I'd have to agree with you. I, I thought Roman Woodberg uh, came out and, and was a, a pretty good striker. But uh, again, he was just as happy to go to the mat. So it, it's an interesting mix. He had uh, reputed to have great, uh, devastating strikes. But who was, maybe it's because he was talented, did neutralize that. And here, these gentlemen are just basically throwing their strikes just to uh, not stall, but they're not trying to do damage with their strikes. It's not like an ego vote chancer situation where the guy is trying to knock the guy's head off. There we see some good boxing at this point. I'm sorry, Stevie. That's fine. No, that was a good double jab right hand and uh, didn't do much damage. Nogueira is trying to load up now. Nice knee. This may end up to be a striking match because the jiu-jitsu seems to be fairly even on the ground so far. Exactly, Stephen. And I'm saw a good left That's a nice elbow combination. Jeremy. And nice combination of hands there, Tim. And you're right. There was a nice elbow. There's a nice elbow. elbow. Great left elbow by Horn. That was a nice short little old turnover on the left elbow. I tell you, I'm right elbow. Beautiful. Horn employing some Muay Thai techniques there, Stephen. Horn is really closing well on the end of this. He's, he's just turning those elbows right over. Minotaur doesn't seem to have a defense for them in close. So he stays far. Minotaur does have the reach advantage here. Oh, Horn comes raging in with a good three-punch combination. And Horn shoots in. Uh-oh. He doesn't want to give up his back to this man. Not really sure why he did that, Wade. Um, he yeah, seemed guys. to be pretty successful with this boxing. Um, I'm not sure. I agree with you, Tim. I think that uh, Horn being the smart fighter that he is, he may have known that the end of the round was approaching there, and rather than get into a last-minute flurry where Rodrigo could steal the round, he may have taken that shot just to neutralize it. I think Horn stole the round. What do you think, Tim? Actually, I do. Um, I, you know, I saw better cross-training as we go to our instant okay. replay. And here we go to a very nice reversal by Jeremy Horn. That was beautiful, but... Mr. Minotauro has his own reversal in mind, and Jeremy gives it up knowing that he might have given up his back in the exchange. Okay, Horn comes in raging with a one, two, three punch combination. The right hand did the most damage, turned Minotauro, and then a good knee to the body. I need you off, I need you off. Horn's got some good stand-up skills. Well, we all know Horn's an accomplished fighter, period, and uh, he's certainly bringing a plethora of experience to the ring to a relatively novice uh, Minotaur and Aguero from a no-holds-barred fighting standpoint. Horn goes high with the roundhouse. It misses. Minotaur shoots. Horn just gives it up, pulls guard. In a three eight-minute round fight, conditioning definitely is a factor. No question about it. Both fighters taking this fight very seriously, training very hard. Um, I had the opportunity to watch Horn train for this fight, and uh, he cross-trained very hard and uh, took this fight uh, very seriously as he knew he'd have a very game opponent, Nugaro, and Nugera 
excuse me, as well as I'm sure Wade uh, had some opportunities to watch uh, Nagara prepare. You know, Horn is really applying a lot of pressure on the ground when Nagara goes for that. Like he, he's trying a reverse arm crank there, and Nagara really didn't want to engage him on the ground. I think this fight has surprised a lot of people. Some people thought that Nogueira would walk through Jeremy Horn. I tell you, I certainly think that Minotaur Nogueira is someone to be reckoned with, but anybody that thinks somebody's gonna walk through Horn, uh, at least on a professional basis, uh, I just don't see it happening. Horn has stood up to the best of them in the ring. He's an excellent fighter. Yeah, because there's like a close to 30, no, oh God, it was a great location. There's almost a 30 pound weight advantage here for Minotaur and his Abu Dhabi experience. Nice double leg. Once again to the takedown. And to the half guard of uh, Horn. And Horn's gonna work from here. I tell you, I have a chance to train with Minotaur and Nagara in Fort Lauderdale uh, on a repetitive basis. And Nagara is a very, very patient fighter, as I think is Horn. So this is gonna be a chess match. Uh, it, it, there may be some intermingled striking and some, uh, some kicks that go on, but I think this is gonna be a chess match between two you know, game fighters. So far it has been, and sometimes chess matches are not crowd pleasers. And there's a restart by Kit Kohler, our referee. Still approximately six minutes to go left in the round. Anything could happen. Oh, beautiful high roundhouse by Jeremy. Partially blocked by Minotaur, but he goes low again. That's become obvious. Yes, you're absolutely right, Stephen. Which makes sense. Stephen, Tim, I have a question for both of you. If this fight does go to the card, with Horn having the name and the reputation and uh, the experience that he does, do you think it's difficult for the judges, who I'm sure would not be biased, but do you think it's difficult to go against the Jeremy Horn in the decision? Uh, that's an interesting point, but I think that the judges here, because one of them is from Japan. Uh, two of the other ones are from states, state sites. Um, I don't think that that will necessarily be a factor. I don't think there's going to be a home time thing. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. I, I think that, uh, as in any sport, basketball underneath the uh, uh, underneath the boards, the big name players get a little more leniency in what they're allowed to do and, and the body that they're allowed to put on their opponents. Jeremy Horn's a likable guy, so any judge or anybody would hate to, you know, score against him. Um, but we're here in neutral grounds, you know, um, here in Rome, Georgia, uh, neither fighter being from here. So um, I believe we'll see a good decision by the judges if it was happened to go to that. Way. Well, it looks like Jeremy is defending the mount fairly well, but Minotaur is kind of cooking him a little bit. But Horn spins out and gets guard. A little tap there by Minotaur. Minotaur can't solve this mystery, though. I'll tell you, we've seen an excellent uh, display of ground skills by Jeremy Horn. In a defensive way, he's kind of controlled the fight. Goes for the big left hook there. He's going to hear a respond with his own. Oh, nice high kick by Horn. That was beautiful. And Horn shoots. see Jeremy roll to his back here. That was a nice high kick. Uh, if it had a little more oomph on it, maybe he would have knocked it down. But it did more to stun, maybe embarrass him. I tell you, as in most fights, you see uh, Horn's confidence beginning to uh, to increase as the fight goes on. I don't think Horn wants to play this game from this position with this man. Uh, if he sinks the other leg hook in, it, it's going to be difficult for him because it's a big man on his back. Horn does Jeremy's spin out. Exactly. He spins out. Uh, good move by Jeremy. Now we're back in the stalemate, down and up position. I expect a restart any moment. There it is. As they come back to a standing position, Jeremy Horn and uh, Rodrigo Nogueira, about uh, five minutes and 15 seconds into the second of three eight-minute rounds in World Extreme Fighting 8, going platinum in Rome, Georgia. You may notice there, get a good look at the scar on the back of Rodrigo Nogueira. Uh, that scar, in fact, was caused by a severe automobile accident he was involved in when he was a young man. Nice 
combination of strikes here by Rodrigo Nogueira to Horn. Horn did block most of those, but Nogueira got busy. And he dumps Jeremy down, but then Jeremy grabs his leg. And we're back into a stalemate. Jeremy Horn perfectly content to come and play guard with uh, a very accomplished scrapper in Rodrigo Minotaur Nogueira. Strange thing is that Minotaur does not seem to want to engage him. Two minutes, guys. Did you hear Kip Puller instruct uh, both fighters there's two minutes left in the round? There's another high kick by Horn. Goes for the shoot, goes for the single. Nogueira. Crawls back. Nogueira's got a clean opportunity at a, a left knee here to the body. Whether he'll take it or not. Well, you're absolutely right, Stephen. You see Jeremy Horn blocking the knee that could come to his head as they were in the position, which left an opportunity for Nogueira to bring about a left knee to the body of Horn. Nonetheless, they come into a uh, guard position again. Shin, like a Thai boxer, that would have been a knockdown. But he caught him with a foot, not as an effective uh, strike as a shin kick. I tell you, this is an interesting display here. One fighter bringing the other back to the feet. The other fighter shoots. They seem perfectly good content there. Horn is working. Sorry, looking for. He's almost. Oh, my name Charles spun out, but Horn was going for that back. He was going to go for that back. This is the first time during the course of the fight we see Jeremy Horn on top and Nogueira on the bottom. We get a chance to look at Nogueira's guard. And round two. I got to say that Jeremy Horn is fighting a very, very smart fight here, and he's he's controlling the action, Tim. Yes, he is, Stephen. You're absolutely right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I can't stress how uh, serious of a fight uh, this is for both fighters. Both fighters uh, prepared very hard, and there's a lot of special interest in this match. So uh, we still have another round to go. So um, it's one of those fights. Anything can happen. It could sway either way. Excellent point, Tim. I tell you, interesting paradigm here because as we go to a replay. Jeremy Horn goes with that right high kick and crack. He catches Minotaur. And Minotaur seems to be puzzled how to solve the mystery of the high kick. Um, nice look at the combinations here, my Degira, against the uh, Horn. Horn backed up against the fence. And Horn virtually blocked every one of those punches. One almost squeaked through. Nagira. And here we go to the high kick again, and kaboom! Jeremy Horn seems to be real happy with his performance on the stand-up game. He's landing counter punches and really good high kicks. He's neutralizing Minotaur on the ground. Here we go to round two. Minotaur comes out jabbing. Horn jabs back. I expect Horn to do Oh, good right hand by Minotaur. That was a good shot. Horn clinches him. He's ready for the Muay Thai knee. And a single, Horn gives it up. Goes right to the mat. I'll tell you what I started to touch on earlier, Stephen, is that uh, you, you don't obtain a 37-4-4 record in this day and age uh, of no holds barred fighting uh, by being a stupid fighter or by doing uh, reckless things in the ring. And Jeremy Horn is certainly one of the most accomplished no holds barred fighters in the game today. Interesting paradigm as Rodrigo Nogueira advanced to the quarterfinals of the rings. He, he, was a, he was one of the last four left in the rings A bracket, and Horn lost the bout early. Many felt if that bout was a no-holds-barred fight, that Horn would have won that fight, no problem, but the rings limit striking on the ground, which is certainly one of Horn's advantages. That's a very good point, Wade. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, it is, because Horn has dis displayed some striking skills in this match. Good low kick, for instance. Nagaro throws his own low kick but it didn't have as much groove on it. 
I expect Horn is going to go low, 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 then high again. He's going to throw the high kick again. And see it coming. The girl's got his hands down by his chest. And Horn knows he's going to throw the high kick. He's going to fake the right hand. Oh, spinning back kick. That can hurt. Horn, Horn deflects and blocks all of a good right hand counter. He just covered up, waited for an opportunity, then dropped the right hand. I tell you, you're right, Stephen. Nagira had a nice flurry there uh, in appearance, but I don't think many of those shots landed solidly. Here comes a low kick. The problem with a lot of fighters when they're standing is that they'll show their kick before they, they do it. They don't throw the jab before they throw the kick. They just throw the kick, and many times the other fighter can just move back. Like Jeremy, double jab, right hand. He's got a pretty educated left jab. And he, and he caught a little bit of that left hook by Nagiro. Jeremy should throw that uh, right low kick again. Looks like he's going to go with that left high kick, though. Oops. Nagira's got to be careful not to punch himself out because he misses a lot of those punches. Uh, Horn does have a good cover-up in the stand-up. Nice right. knee by Nagira. That was a nice knee. Looks like Jeremy's wanting to catch a second win here. It's going to be a boxing match here. Once again, back to the uh, overall counterhook position. Tim, is this fight gone the way that you expected it to, or is this a surprise to you? This is a, a, a you know, a big surprise to me. You know, I ch have the opportunity to train with Jeremy Horn, and, uh, you know, I did not expect this type of fight from him. Um, he's been very willing to uh, play with Nugera um, on the ground, and, uh, you know, his confidence has, you know, been, uh, he's been overly confident. He's uh, looking, for, you know, to tee off on Nugera with a lot of punches, you know, when possible, and he's more than obliged to take Nugera on the ground as well. So, very, you know, good stuff by Jeremy Horn. Very impressed. And I tell you, as Steven touched on earlier, uh, every time that Rodrigo Nogueira flurries, uh, Horn is more than willing and able to come back out with a counterpunch that seems to be much more effective. Uh, it's, 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 been a, it's been Jeremy Horn's fight to some degree. Nogueira just tried to get them out. Jeremy did a perfect elevator, got him back into a loose guard. Nogueira tried to lands a little punch there. He's getting busy. This fight has uh, so much uh, for the different uh, fans of No Holds Barred. You know, we've shown a great display of boxing and stand-up skills, as well as a great display of uh, ground jujitsu skills as well. I tell you, these are, these are two mixed martial artists, Tim, and that's what the sport has become, as Stephen touched on earlier. Absolutely, Wade. It's going to be interesting to see uh, Jeremy Horn's high kick and uh, high kick, let's say, by someone, by Pele, the difference of the power, if it so happens to play a factor when he fights Militich. Jeremy Horn uh, invites Rodrigo Nogueira to join him on the mat. I think one of the problems in mixed martial arts uh, that a fighter encounters in the training is they cannot train on one specific thing and get great at it. For instance, a high kick minutes, or a punch to be able to knock a person out. They have to, nice low kick. <laughs> they have to train in so many different elements that they suffer sometimes from the jack of all trades master of none syndrome. Uh, because you have to know how to defend on the ground and you have to do, know how to defend standing up. So, for instance, a straight jiu-jitsu player may be able to tap out a mixed martial art player in straight jiu-jitsu, but in a no holds barred fight, he doesn't know how to defend a strike, per se, like a Matt Hughes Pereira situation, and he gets beat. Coming from a, from a, a striking and kickboxing background, Stephen, uh, have, the, have you, the kicks of Horn been effective so far? Uh, actually, not to any large extent, no. Because he doesn't have, a, he doesn't have as much power as, let's say, a K-1 fighter or something. But the, the thing is, he's scoring points, and the low kicks probably are going to have more effect than the high kicks. And it's frustrating to a fighter when you're getting kicked in the face. It throws you out of your game plan because you know that the judge is going to say, hey, that's, that's a big-time score. 
Steven, do you think that Jeremy Horn has imposed his game plan on this fight? Absolutely. He's totally imposed his game plan. Minotaur has attempted to impose his game plan, but Jeremy, Jeremy Horn, in a way, has shut him down. I would, I would have to agree with you to some degree, Steven. It was interesting, a comment that you made earlier was that if only by defense... Uh, Jeremy Horn has has controlled the pace and neutralized Nagara, and I think that's that's to some degree exactly what's happened in this fight. Absolutely, not only by defense, but by, by, by defense and by countering with his defense. Every time he does some defensive move, he's just not pulling guard, holding on. He's working for position. He'll throw down like he's going for an arm bar, and he'll hit him. He'll do like he's going to try and elevate him, and then he'll hit him. He'll do something, and then he'll hit him just with a little tap. These aren't devastating blows, but they are enough to distract and to go to the judge. The judge is saying if that's a strike and it comes to score. Exactly. Okay, uh, 30 seconds left. I think Horn has got the fight in under control. Uh, the judges may not see it that way, but I see that he is controlling fight. It looks like he's got on his way to a victory. Seconds left. I tell you, he has control of the fight. I would not be surprised to see this go to overtime, though, Stephen. I think, uh, I think, from the standpoint of, uh, of the judges' view so far, as uh, we see a mouthpiece drop out there. Yeah, that knee knocked the mouthpiece right out of Minotaur. Um, it's going to be a close call, but I wouldn't be surprised if they gave the decision to Horn in this particular one. It's going to be interesting. Um, be interesting. Minotaur does have a little bit of a nick, it looks like. Wait, has this been open? Has this been I open? think Horn has used a really compact, compressed control and counter style and good stand-up. I, I would have to give him a slight edge in winning the fight. Exactly, Stephen. We've seen, uh, uh, we've all seen, uh, and I think we can all say that there's a little bit of uh, the Pat Militich flavor um, in Jeremy Horn this evening, um, you know, and that's a good, uh, you know, and, you know, we'll be seeing more of Pat Militich later on this evening. But uh, in regards to Jeremy Horn, though, um, that Pat Militich flavor is definitely there, you know. Um, Pat has, you know, the potential to shut fighters down, um, you know, Townsend Saunders, the Macacos, uh, those, all those exciting fighters that are very uh, dead. Deadly, you know, and I think we're seeing that in Jeremy Horn this evening. That's an excellent point because it wasn't like a Militech-esque type performance because Pat does take a guy out of his game plan and make him look bad. Let's see what the judges think and let's go up. A decision. All three judges give the bout to the winner of the heavyweight super fight champion, Rodrigo.